Welcome to DABCC Radio, where smart people listen. Virtualization and Cloud Talk, featuring cutting-edge solutions from the hottest companies around the globe. Broadcasting from the DABCC offices in sunny Sarasota, Florida. Surrounded by computers, books, and Legos. A Microsoft MVP, Citrix Charter CTP, VMware VExpert. And your host, Douglas Brown. And welcome to another episode of DABCC Radio. We have a phenomenal show for you. We have a couple guys on the line today. We have EG Innovations with us, and we have Gotham with us. Uh, and these guys are some of the best in the market at what they do. EG Innovations being a phenomenal performance monitoring management solution, truly enterprise that gets to the really to the the problem, the root cause. And, and allows you to solve the problems before you they, they become real problems, right? Sometimes before you even know that they're there, which is the best way to solve a problem. Uh, and so we have Bala, the CTO at EG, with us. Uh, we also have Ken from Gotham, who in Gotham is one of the biggest and best and uh, longest-standing uh, integrators in the Citrix uh, virtualization community world, and he's going to add value to the conversation uh, and, and share with us some of the anecdotes and his experiences from uh, working in this space for as long as he has, which is decades. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited to have both these guys. We're going to specifically talk about some of the issues around VDI. You know, there's a lot of hype about VDI, a lot of uh, um, you know missteps, but a lot of successes also. And we're, so we're going to talk about some of that stuff today. And and uh, just get to the get to the root cause. We're going to get to the root cause with our root cause analysis uh, solution and, and much more. So on that note, here's my interview with Ken from Gotham and Bala from EG Innovation. My first question today is uh, for any podcast is who are you and what do you do? So let's take Bala first. Uh, Bala, who are you and what do you do over at EG Innovations? Hey, thanks, Doug. Uh, thanks, everyone, for listening, and uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Bala Vaidinathan, CTO at uh, EG Innovations. Among other things, I am also responsible for uh, setting up our product direction. I also work closely with our uh, key customers, partners, and our service delivery team, primarily to understand uh, what the customers are looking for and shape the product based on it. In effect, uh, our solution grows out of what the industry and our customers need and uh, my role in this is to make sure we keep delivering more value and more benefits to our customers and sort of set the standard for what is to be expected from a performance management solution very cool ken who are you and what do you do over at gotham Uh, i'm the cto over at gotham gotham is a reseller in the northeast united states we cover from hartford down to philly uh, we've been a long-time partner in the VDI space to a lot of the big players in that space. Uh, and because we're in the Northeast, we deal with a lot of the big customers there. So Gotham's uh, about 150 employees now, uh, roughly probably about $85 million in revenue. So we're a big player in this space. We've been Citrix's partner of the year. We've been big VMware partner, all, all the different players that, that work here. So I'm excited to deal with uh, EG. I'm excited to be on, on your show, Doug. This, uh, this is going to be great. I'm excited to have both of you guys. I think this is going to be great. We always put together a little bit of a, I wouldn't call it a script. I'd call it more of sort of talking points, make sure we stay on, on a, some sort of a track because Lord knows where we would go, right? And I think we just have a wonderful conversation today, and I can't wait to, to dive into this. So one more question before we do get into the conversation is tell us about your companies. You know? So Bala, who is EG Innovations? And you know, well, what's, what are you guys trying to accomplish? So, Doug, we are an application performance management company, so providing end-to-end monitoring, analytics, and diagnostic software and solutions. Um, Essentially, we focus on providing solutions that enable enterprises across the globe to simplify their IT delivery, simplify management of their IT delivery services. And essentially, we help businesses deliver optimal customer uh, experience by providing end-to-end visibility from users to services to servers 
to networks and storage. Now, our solution overall provides um, what we call as a universal insight or 360 degree view of an entire IT service infrastructure. So what this does is it allows IT teams to collaborate easily, solve problems, improve ROI. And this is a solution that is designed for dynamic, interdependent, physical, virtual, and cloud infrastructures uh, for today's dynamic nature. Uh, essentially what this does is it could help your IT help desk and administrators to identify cost of issues in short, we find problems so our customers can fix them before it impacts their end users. Um, so we deliver all of those above using a single product and we've been around uh, for a decade and a half now. So we didn't uh, sprout out yesterday and we have been the industry leaders for a long time in a lot of uh, uh, important uh, benchmarks, if you will. Uh, we've been leaders in root cause before it became a buzzword, business service monitoring before it became a buzzword, total visibility, universal insight, uh, customer management before those became buzzwords too. So we've always been ahead of the curve, understanding what the future organizations need and how to make IT service delivery successful. And in terms of uh, company structure. We are a global company with customers across multiple component, uh, continents, uh, significant presence in uh, Asia and Europe, uh, but our primary area of operations is in North America and we have uh, a large presence here and we've, have, we've had customers for over 15 years here. Yeah, when I think of EG, I, I think of true enterprise monitoring. You guys have been around a long time and do just a phenomenal job. So, uh, um, it's yeah, thanks for being on the show. I look forward to to this conversation. Uh, uh, Ken, you, you told us a little bit about Gotham. Anything else to add? You know, as I said before, Gotham sits in the Northeast with a lot of highly regulated companies and large banks and pharmaceuticals as our customers. So actually about half of our business is really around security and the other half's around virtualization. So we've always seen this intersection of secure application delivery, right? Because applications are the business value that we all try to get to our customers. There's no business value until a user is sitting in front of an application having the experience that they need to make the company money. And what we've got to do in today's world is deliver those applications on a number of platforms in a secure, compliant manner. And that, that's always sort of been our calling. I think over the last couple of years, that's really morphed into this process of teaching our customers how to offer that as a service, right? Not just buying the parts and pieces, but creating a, a, an element that the customers can come to subscribe to these services, subscribe to these applications, and be sure to get them in a productive manner. So I think that's how we've been changing the last couple of years. Okay, Ken, you know, I, I think he, he, service is so right because in the past we saw I, it was just different back then. And nowadays things are becoming more of as a service, right? Not just in, you know, the cloud as a service, uh, IT as a service, software as a service, or what have you. But IT as a service is... is uh, uh, is just so prominent in today's. It's it's the right way to do things, right? And with the technologies that we have, uh, that's that's just the way we're going. It's 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 it makes all the sense to me. If that makes yeah, sense, it's a shift. yeah, it's a shift to consumerism, right? I think that's part yeah. of the part of the cloud that makes the most sense to me is this concept that people have a need and they just want to go buy something to get it, and and in the end, that's the service, right? They don't want to be shopping for. PCs or, you know, when a, when a customer specifically, when a business person is picking a specific technology, like I always get a little weirded out, right? It's like going to my doctor and asking for a specific drug. Like, what is the doctor there for at that point? I, I think you're right. I think the consumerization of IT is the piece that, you know, in the past you just went in, you got a phone and, and you didn't think about it or you got a computer and you didn't think about it. But today we think about this stuff more and more because we have a computer at home, right? We have right. the iPhones, all this stuff, and we expect it to, one, work the way it always does at home, if not better, because they're pros managing it, right? And two, right. to be able to use all these devices that we're now accustomed to, you know, from the, the like I mentioned, the phones to the, the pads to, you know, you name it. Yep. So, uh, yeah, it's just, it's the, the world has completely changed from when you and I got in the business and, and uh, we used to be able to tell people what to do. It's, it's changing even <laughs> faster. The past few years, um, the app culture, as I'd like to call it, has taken over everything that is in IT. People are uh, 
no longer willing to go through hoops to get to an application that they want. Everybody is so used to just clicking on something and then immediately experiencing what they clicked on. Uh, it's no longer viable for you to ask them to get a certain kind of PC, get a certain kind of uh, OS, get a certain kind of setup and everything and massage it in such a way that uh, they need to have it exactly right for a particular application to work. They just want to be able to click on something and they want to be able to see it work. And that means it has got to go to services because uh, earlier days, computing was all about uh, infrastructure and getting the right infrastructure in place and getting your right applications running on your infrastructure, getting your own ecosystem set up so everybody can plug into it. Now it's it's about all about services, what you can offer to me. So people have to focus less on infrastructure, more on what they can bring to the table. As Ken was saying earlier, essentially, what kind of service can you provide to the customer? Focus on that and all the other stuff that you don't need consume as services from other people who are providing that services. And I think everybody's going towards that ecosystem. Yeah, I totally yeah. agree, Paul. I think, I think it's about the ex experience, experience, right? It, right. It, we're, we're, we're telling people that we've got the applications, but we're now responsible for their experience with it, not just a bunch of excuses about, well, you have the wrong OS, you have the wrong this, you didn't yeah. patch. You know, they're buying an experience from us, and we've got to own that. That's really a good uh, segue into the first part of our conversation, which is what what role does Citrix and, and BDI play in today's world? So we, we do deal with a lot of organizations that have uh, Citrix, VDI, and all of those. And in today's world, I think they are well positioned to be able to take advantage of this uh, app-specific, service-specific nature of today. Uh, the way it is driven, wherein they already have an established channel in place. And if they can deliver all these different applications on demand effectively with full experience that the customer is looking for, then they basically have the whole thing made. Uh, but by nature, uh, they are, they being the interface, and uh, now Citrix has become a lot more of a platform with a lot of different platforms around it. They've become complex organizations. They've become complex infrastructures with multitude of dependencies. So well, while they are well situated to take advantage of this uh, need on the customer side to consume everything as an app, they're also in a place where uh, if it doesn't work, whether it's a network problem, whether it's an infrastructure problem, whether it's an application problem, whether it's a bandwidth issue, they are the delivery mechanism. They are the delivery interface. So they get blamed first, uh, both at Citrix and VDI. And it's mostly the admins who have to deal with it. And this is why we see a lot of uh, Citrix and VDI uh, uh, infrastructures in our customer base because they need a simple way to manage all this complexity. So um, it, it, they, while they are, in, as I said, while they are in the right place to take advantage of it, it does come with a lot of uh, caveats on their side, and we need a better way to manage them. Most of the people need a better way to manage their services. Yeah. Awesome. Anything there? Bro? Yeah, I think. Uh, I, well, first of all, I think my customers are challenged uh, on some level with the, the gap between the promise of VDI as they saw it three or four years ago and where they've gotten to it today. I think follows on the hitting the nose in the in the uh, nail on the head, we talked about the application structure. They get that they need an app store and they get that they need app delivery. Where they've had trouble is as using VDI as a platform. And uh, you know, again, the concept that it was going to kill all endpoints and be the new PC, um, that's been challenging. And a lot of it's been challenging just because the app delivery mechanisms weren't mature enough to kind of manage all those elements. So uh, VDI and, and, and Citrix as a, as a virtual desktop platform uh, are still strong, but some of the target numbers have, have definitely been lowered at a lot of my clients, right? Targets of 75, 85% have been, you know, rolled back to 30, 35% in a lot of the organizations I work with. So, yeah, it, there seems to definitely be a lot of, you know, sort of shine off the, the VDI Apple lately, right? You know, even Gardner, as you just mentioned, within your business, Gardner has dropped the average VDI corporate target rate from 45% to 8%. Uh, are you seeing this also with you? you are you seeing this in, in with your customers, both your Bala, Ken? Uh, and do you think this was a maturity issue, maybe? You know, where uh, 
you know, the, the hype was a little bit too much before we, we were able to actually pull it off or leave it at that? So from, from what Gartner says, uh, um, I would tend to agree that it's no longer a hot ticket item, right? Uh, but if you really look at it, Gartner was the one jumping on the bandwagon and predicting uh, VDI to be the next big thing for like five years in a row, if I remember. Oh, uh, God, yes. A lot of companies bought into it, rushed into it. It was a hot technology, interesting technology. But I think there were a lot of underlying challenges. You alluded to a couple of them. Uh, it was maturity issues, and it was also an issue of not uh, having the right processes in place. Uh, however, it might not be as popular anymore, but I do believe that it is still being implemented uh, at a reasonably significant scale. I think people have just stopped talking about it as a next new big thing, like they don't talk about virtualization as the next new big thing anymore. I, I do believe that, uh, like Ken mentioned, while there is not a lot of excitement uh, as it used to be, but there is still traction and people are still looking to uh, do VDI. I think they need to work with the right partners. They need to work with the right people um, to do this right because uh, the industry has improved significantly. We've learned a lot of things. There is a lot of good processes and products in place for you to be successfully doing that if you have the right um, if you have the right motivation or if you have the right partner in place. I definitely agree with that. Ken, anything to add there? Yeah, I, I, I do think part of it was a maturity issue. I think we went into this, um, first of all, we sort of slit our own throats talking about how it was going to be cheap, right? It was going to be much cheaper than desktops. And so the initial concept in terms of cost per user, uh, I don't know if it was achievable based on those those first numbers coming out. And then as we got into these organizations and started to put up uh, pilots, uh, you know, we essentially put them in on, on you know, cheaper equipment, some of the cheaper stuff because we were trying to prove this cost model out. And we also, we weren't prepared really to deal with the scope of complexity in a lot of the enterprises in terms of how many apps we were really talking about, how capable these organizations were fulfilling uh, app provisioning requests in a role-based manner, uh, you know, user profiles, you know, all these issues, just the concept of taking the cheapest storage in the world, which is, you know, the storage that comes, you know, half free inside your Dell PC and moving it into an EMC SAN, all these things just sort of compiled on themselves. And then as it became more successful than we probably were prepared for it to be, you know, we were taking these, you know, sort of Kitty Hawk gliders we had built and slamming jet engines on them and pumping out 10,000 people. Um, and, and there wasn't the right kind of, uh, you know, meters and metrics and controls, you know, I always say it's like, you know, we, like we were flying those jets, you know, through a cloud bank with no instrument panel. Um, you know, so I, I do think there's a, there's a chance to do it better now. I think if we understand what it's good for, and, and Bob was talking about different use cases that make more sense, if we instrument these properly and make sure that we have all the right tools, because I go being held to that experience uh, criteria, because now it's a service, and now we're responsible for every time it's a little bit slow. And we've got to be ready to own that on the day we release the product, not two years after we release the product. You got it. Well, definitely price was an issue, but but I think price has gone down considerably. You know, uh, one of the big issues to begin with, you mentioned it was storage, right? And over the past couple of years, storage prices have dropped. And then, of course, there's some amazing solutions to speed up IOPS. And those that's just not an issue anymore, Right. Uh, which, in return, we've seen the VDI implementation just, you know, uh, um, a heck of a lot better. Did a podcast recently with a customer of, a, of another vendor that came on and said when they first did VDI, it was unusable. Uh, and the people just stopped using it, and they went back to, you know, whatever they used before. They brought in their own mechanism, sort of subverted IT, right, shadow IT. Uh, but then they brought in that storage fix, and, and everything was just Beautiful. I agree with both points. Uh, the maturity issue uh, from an operational standpoint and the technology standpoint. Um, I, I second what Ken said on uh, the ROI. People, a lot of people jumped into it uh, being convinced that this was going to be a cheaper way to deliver apps for the users, but it wasn't. It wasn't uh, by any stretch of imagination at that time, and they got hurt by it a lot. Uh, but I think, uh, the, of course, uh, like you mentioned, Doug, the, software's, the software was not mature enough. There were a lot of different pieces that were dragging along. And the complexity of the environment was uh, 
really a big surprise for most of the most of the customers who are trying it. But I've got a good story here. Uh, we had one of our customers. This was like uh, four and a half, five years ago. This was a long time ago, long time before all these new uh, software that is updated. Everything has come into play today. Uh, but this customer had an extremely aggressive time frame. Was, they wanted to go from a zero user environment to a 10,000 user environment in six months. And this was basically the time where uh, people would be very happy with the 100 user VDI implementation. Everything would go great in the pilot and then they turned to 1,000 users and everything would stop working. But we worked with them, and one of the things that they did was from a process standpoint, they were very good, and they had learned that uh, performance management is going to be a key piece in understanding where things are going to break and how to fix them if they were ever to be successful in going from zero to 10,000 users in six months. So they had done the evaluation and picked the tool, picked us, before they even started on this VDI journey, VDI project. So from day one, they knew where their problems were. It was not a situation where they had no problems, but long story short, they reached their target of 10,000 users with a lot with technology that is a lot inferior um, from it is today, but they were able to do it in a timely manner because they were able to see and predict all the bottlenecks before they happened and stay ahead of that performance drop-off curve. They were able to see that their antivirus were going to kill their VDI. So they were able to manage and put processes in place so it doesn't overload it. They were, they were able to see that the disk that they have that uh, Ken was talking about was not going to be effective. So they got the best disk that they could get. And they were able to spread users enough with different kinds of uh, internal process to make sure that they were able to go there. So the lesson being here is if there was operational maturity, if they understand things like performance management, as Ken mentioned, I love that analogy. I use it all the time. If you are flying an airplane, a jet, without a dashboard, you have absolutely no idea where you're going. You have no idea when you're running out of gas. You have no idea how high you're flying, how low you're flying. You have some idea. You can see out the windshield, but you're really handicapped. And that's what most of the people ended up doing, which is jumping on this big initiative, doing something for 100 users, being successful, and then jumping into 1,000 users and being hit with a big wall of complexities that they couldn't begin to understand because they don't have access to the VMware infrastructure. They don't have access to the storage infrastructure. All they had access to there was that Citrix broker, and everything looked good there. What could the problem be? On and on it goes. But you got an insight. It's all about insight. If you understand, if you could see what's going on, you can start addressing it. Absolutely. Um, Ken, I, I want to ask you uh, directly. Uh, you know, you guys work both heavily, of course, with Citrix and EG. Um, can you add some value to what Bala just said about you know how EG's able to to solve some of these or spot the issues so that the customer can then in return solve them? Yeah, I think it's look. I think there's a there's an onus on us if as as a value added reseller to make to set our customers up for success and not failure, obviously. And and uh, whenever you're working on any initial sales orientation or, or sales process with Citrix or any other company, you know they want the pilot to seem like it's so easy. You know, you just you know one of the jokes we make is the the only the biggest thing you got to do for a pilot of some of these technologies is just make sure that you have a clear area by the rack and you have it masked off by crowd control tape because everything's going to leap out of the box and install itself and you don't want anyone getting hit when the boxes are flying into the rack. So, you know, we've got to tell those those stories, those mature stories that Bala just told as part of our pilot and make sure that they understand that, yes, we're, we are going to instrument this. We're going to put this, do this right in the, in the first place. We're going to show you a mature cost, a mature, reasonable cost model that's really going to be what things are going to cost. And we're not just going to get into this fight about, you know, trying to tell you all this good news and then get you to those 100 users. And honestly, that we've proved nothing. If we prop 100 users and we can't replicate that to 1,000, that's a failed pilot, right? That's not a pilot. That's, that's a fantasy, a group fantasy that we all had together, right? So we've got to get to this place where we know what's going to happen. We can predict that what's going to happen. That's why EG and tools like this are so important to Gotham, that we, we, we bring in this maturity from the starting point. We bring this maturity into the initial pilot conversations and make sure that everyone's prepared to succeed because... 
I, I want to work with the same customers 20 years from now. I'm too old and tired to get all new customers. So I need to make sure that I'm not pissing them off and that they're going to come back to me next month. Throw it at you. Do you think that we're ready today? Do you think that with the right tools, with EG in there, with uh, you know what the enhancements within you know what Citrix is bringing, even people like VMware and Microsoft, I, can, do you think we can pull this off with the tools that we have today? We absolutely can. I mean, in specific use cases, it's obviously very very strong. I think I think there's still application distribution maturity issues within most large organizations. Right, the, the software development oh, lifecycle, how they manage those things. And we can't provide a valid, uh, you know, end-to-end service for application distribution or a valid virtual desktop when all that uh, mishigas, right, all that mess in the software distribution stuff has been sort of federated out to all these local offices and guys running around fixing stuff themselves. So I I think we're ready to do it in a a significant number of use cases. And I think, honestly, that other stuff, that application distribution framework, it needs to be fixed. Right, you're not going to get away with that from a security perspective or from an organizational control perspective. This business of not knowing who uses what applications is going to go the way of the dinosaur in the next five years. Yeah. Absolutely, and then yeah, this is just the any 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 computing too requirement. Right, follow up, please. Yeah, I, I was going to say this is where companies like Gotham uh, play a significant role in. Um, in working with the organizations and to making them more mature, more fine-tuned for them to be ready to take on VDI. If you look at the right organization, which has the right processes and has the right use case, VDI is absolutely doable today and will be absolutely successful. Could go like gangbusters, but the key here is you have to have the right processes, you have to have the right tool, and you have to work with the right partners. This is not something that you... uh, you uh, fool around with your uh, lab for 50 users and then imagine that's going to be perfect for 5,000 users. Uh, a lot of people have gone down that road and got burnt really badly. Right. It's not, I mean, the Gartner blaming thing is super fun, but the truth of the matter is there's this huge requirement that people want this answer. And that's all Gartner did was go out and server everybody and say, well, how much VDI do you want? How much, how bad do you want this to work? Right. Similar to the cloud conversations today. And everybody said, yes. I mean, I mean, it's a little like polling a bunch of high school seniors and, and confidently reporting back, oh, good news, in the future, everyone's going to be a rock star, a pop star, or own Apple, right? So <laughs> it, 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 it's just a mirror of what the industry was wanting, right? That, that's such a good point. It's such a good point, and, and it makes all the sense in the world right there, absolutely. And now we, as, I, as technologists, as, as solution providers and, and uh, 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 solution creators, right? Uh, need to to step up and give them those tools, and and I think it's there today, which is cool. So let's let's move on. So, what are some of the challenges with performance management in Citrix infrastructure today? Um, does Workspace Cloud change this at all? Well, when I look at Citrix, uh, essentially the basic challenge is the complexity, right? Long time ago, it used to be presentation server. Now look at it, you've got Zen app, Zen desktop, Zen mobile, Netscaler, app controller, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm missing a dozen of them. A virtualization, Citrix has expanded its portfolio significantly and it has become much more richer and you can do a lot more things with it. The customers are much more happier. You're able to deliver a much richer experience. Uh, but all this flexibility comes with added complexity. What makes it, uh, for lack of a better term, easy or sexy for the customer is the same thing that makes it more complex to manage. Uh, So now it's a group of platforms. It's a true ecosystem, right? Um, But one thing remains the same, as I said earlier. It's the delivery interface. So that's what people see. At the end of the day, your application breaks, it's Citrix problem. Your uh, network breaks, it's Citrix problem. A Citrix admin gets the most amount of complaints, and it's always something like uh, I can't log in or the applications are not launching. And then uh, what does the admin do? He's got to log into four different tools, and these tools are like uh, essentially the process that the admin goes through is like uh, uh, blind men or five blind men and an elephant. Uh, but in this case, all the five blind men are one admin. I think that's a 
contrude analogy, but essentially they are they are working on this uh, problem with two hands tied behind their back. Even before virtualization was added, virtualization essentially took a resource sharing platform and added a layer of resource sharing on top of it. So how do you really manage it? So there is, it's rife, this area, this space, it's rife for uh, performance management challenges, being not able to understand what is going on end to end. So those problems with Citrix remain. With Workspace, you've taken a bunch of things that was there in your uh, infrastructure and moved it out to cloud. So now they became cloud services. In some ways, it has simplified things, taken some of the administrative tasks out of your hands, but at the same time, it's added more management layers. You have to make sure you're getting those services effectively. The Zenapp servers are still in your data center. You still have to manage those, but these things are now in different places, and you need to be able to have a tool that manages all this in a single unified way. So that's my that's my <laughs> long rant on this. Uh, Ken, go ahead. Well, yeah, Bala, well, I totally agree. I mean, I, I, you just talked us through it. I think you're right. We had this problem traditionally of silos of the storage guys, the network guys, and trying to get a, a look across all those silos in the in the, in the same place. And it was a it was a political problem, but at least we were all in the same company, and we were, you know, we could we could escalate to someone in the same organization. Virtualization is a complication. Cloud, it, it just it, it's two orders of magnitude more difficult, right? Because no one has suspended the laws of physics, right? There's still latency. There's still database servers. We don't even know where the data is in some cases, you know. So for us to really understand the net experience of a user. We've got to instrument a lot more things and understand a lot more things. And again, it's in, in a significant number of them are in no way in our control, right? We, we really can't necessarily control the quality of wireless and Starbucks in the Northeast. You know, we'd like to, but we can't. So uh, yeah, I, I totally concur with that, that you, you've got to have some way of instrumenting this. And I think it gets more and more challenging as we become uh, more and more distanced from the actual uh, physical reality of what's going on here. You know, it's one of those things where you know, when you go into, you know, a well-run organization, something looks easy, it's because they work really hard at making it look easy. And I think we're going to have to work really hard at making it look easy when it comes to quality user experiences as clouds become more and more diverse and more hybrid. Hybrid um, just adds more complexity and more things outside of your prem. At the end of the day, everything's going to be our fault. So we just as long as we know that, it's a good starting point. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. Everything is going to be yeah, everything is going to be laid at your doorstep. And basically, what we what we need to understand here is all of this complexity, all of these challenges that the Citrix administrator faces. Um, the customer doesn't care. The user doesn't care. All they care about is their user experience. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work for them. It's they don't care if the Netscaler is dropping packets or uh, there is a connectivity issue from their Starbucks or whatever they are doing. What they need is perfect, ideal user experience. And if we can't deliver that without an issue, then we are not really delivering valuable service to them. Citrix has a bunch of monitoring tools. Or I won't say a bunch, but they have uh, some monitoring tools, some new capabilities, some newer solutions. Uh, any thoughts on those, or do they cut the mustard? Uh, I've seen some of them in the mid market. Honestly, I mean, they're not. You know, it's if you're in Scam already with these new purchases and new things. Um, you know, I, 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 you said earlier on, like that. You know, this is not. You know, EG works for the, the enterprises. I, they don't cut the mustard in enterprises. I can say that. Yeah. Uh, what, what I can tell you is the, the, the Citrix products, uh, they've, they've done a decent job, uh, but they've stayed in their lane. Their primary focus has mostly been try to prove it's not Citrix, try to s give enough metrics on Citrix to make sure that somebody can look into it and see if it's their problem or not. But like Ken mentioned, when it comes to enterprises, it really doesn't cut the mustard because collecting metrics is not really rocket science. Pretty much most of the people who's, who are listening to this podcast should be able to get the metrics they want from Perfmont. The metrics are there, but when you have a problem, you're not searching for metrics. You're searching for symptoms and causes. You're searching for the thing that is breaking down that's affecting everybody. When you've got 200 uh, antivirus instances running on different uh, Citrix systems or 
in the Citrix user sessions and then starting to impact your entire farm, you're not looking for each and every metric from those 200 systems. You could spend hours looking into it. What you need is a solution that can look across it and say, hey, somebody just started off an antivirus uh, scheduler. The scheduler misbehaved and whatever is supposed to stop it, start at 10 o'clock in the night, it started at 10 o'clock in the morning, and it's going to bring you down because it's choking your I.O. You need that level of information so you can act on it and resolve it Take care of the problem. Remember, Citrix is, it's not like one guy having one problem in one corner. There is this potential of one guy having a problem or one girl having a problem in one corner could bring down an entire Citrix server. In some cases, a bunch of servers are even a farm. So you need a solution that is truly end-to-end, understands what a service is, correlates based on it, does root cause analysis, so has all that sophistication built in. So when you have a problem, you've got answers in front of you, not a bunch of metrics. Perfect. Do you guys think we can solve the problem today? I, I would say I think I think you've got to take that. And, and Bob was talking about this. You've got to you've got to kind of break the paradigm of individual people looking at the individual technologies they're responsible for and trying to. I mean, that health check might be important in their world, but until you look at this from the customer back, you're not going to be able to solve the problem, right? You're not going to be able to, you can't go into a lot, you can't go to like the automobile, auto repair, auto, auto dealership business and solve the problem by stopping in at the, at the repair shop and the sales and the VP and the finance guy and asking each of them, so how do customers like your part of the business, right? You've got to basically go to the customer and, and kind of go back, well, what was this experience and what did you like and what did you not like? And it's, it's that re-architecture and rethinking of performance management as a, as a service in relation to customer experience that, ha- that, that we have to have to solve the problem, right? We have to have that look at it. We can't look at this from a, you know, if you've if you got, you got a performance problem, someone starts giving you, you know, regular Perfmon CPU counters, you fire them and get somebody else, right? You need to get somebody who understands this problem is, is not going to be just a Perfmon counter kind of problem. And I, I think there are tools out there. Obviously, EG is one of them. But, but it's also the, you've got to change the mindset of your organization, right? You've got to have that performance monitor, that product management concept inside of your IT group be as critical as the guy that owns storage, the guy that owns compute, the guy that owns network. You know, when you see an organization that's built that way, now you're seeing an organization that's politically ready to take on this, or, this problem as well as technically capable. Right. What, what's needed to uh, really – the problem – okay, let me answer this question in, uh, in two phase. Um, in addition to what Ken said, uh, the first phase I would say is uh, the, in a simple way, EG has solved this problem. It is there in our solution. Uh, the second part of the answer is uh, what Ken is alluding to, which is organizations have to understand that we've been preaching this for the last decade and a half, that – hey, don't look at servers for your performance management anymore. You're not delivering a service from one server. And even if you are, you are delivering a service to the end user. What's important is how that service is functioning and what is the user experience on that service for the end user. And then walk back from there to understand how the service is being delivered What are the different infrastructure components that are being used to deliver that service? And can we manage that as a service? Not a bunch of servers, but as a service, not the tree that goes down where you see 25 Citrix servers, 50 Citrix servers, all in the same exact uh, tree structure with no real understanding of how they are working with each other. Understand how the service really works and how it's being delivered to the end user And if you manage that effectively, and that's what we've been doing for the last 15 years, that gives us an advantage to understand when a service has an issue, where is the issue coming from as opposed to where the impact is happening. So we can focus you and take you right to where the issue is coming from so you can take care of it for the most part before it starts impacting the end users because that's where you want to be. So you need two things. One, you need EG. Second, you need the ability to, in your organization, have this maturity to say, I'm going to treat this as a service. 
this is not going to be a bunch of silos where the database guy just is responsible for the database and I will ask no further questions from him. And if he shows database is green, then he's off the hook. And then if the network guy does the same thing, Citrix guy says the same thing, this, it doesn't work like that anymore. It hasn't worked like that for a very long time and a lot of organizations are still stuck in that, um, stuck in that architecture that is exasper uh, that is making this problem worse. Perfect. So, Ken, let me let me throw this and let's sort of close off this conversation by by throwing this question at you. So, I'm a potential Gotham customer, right? I just con or you know had you guys come to my office. I have hundred thousand users out throughout the world, and I say to you, you know what? I think we're ready to do this VDI thing. It's what we want. It's what we need. Now, how can Gotham? How can you uh, recommend us to do this? And how can you guarantee or what do you recommend for us to guarantee ex uh, user experience and then in return scale this up to the size that we want to go? Excellent. So, yeah, I, I think you think of yourself as a business, right? You think of yourself as somebody who's going to be providing this desktop as a service structure out to this organization, and you start to frame out what your customers look like. What are the use cases? What do those structures look like? And what are their requirements? What are they going to be thinking that they want from you from that perspective? So once you've got your product designed and costed, then you make sure that you have all the, all the tools and all the metrics to make sure that you can do this. Do you have the right performance management in place? Do you have the right uh, size management in place? Do you have the right processes for application distribution? But I think for us, that conversation starts with, let's not think of this as a, uh, a, an exercise in, in, in a QVC IT where I just keep showing you slideshows and you just keep pressing buy when you see something you like and you just keep buying parts and pieces. Like, I'll, you know, I'll take the UCS, I'll take this. Let's look at it as a product. Let's talk about what we have to deliver to our users and what their expectations are. And then once we de develop that cost model behind it, now we're in business together, right? Now we're figuring out how to do this, what are the elements, how am I set up to succeed? And certainly that's going to include, as I said, it's going to include performance management, it's going to include a good hardware standard for my final scaling numbers, not just my initial 100 users. It's going to include all those elements that put me in that business because that's what everyone in IT knows today. This consumerization thing is, if your customers don't like you and they don't like the service, you're out of a job, and, and deservedly so. Right, so let's let's do it the right way the first time. That's how I would start with you. So uh, Citrix lifecycle management, where do where do you see this fitting in? Yeah, I have this. This is my big pet peeve. That's uh, uh, actually a pretty good question. Essentially, uh, if you look at it, performance management has always gotten the wrong end of the stick, if you will. Nobody looks at performance management in the beginning stages of a project lifecycle. Essentially, performance management, monitoring, uh, service management, all of this comes into play once you start running into issues. And for the most of the conversation that we've had today, most of the services that we've discussed today, once you've started having issues, it's already too late. The services are changing. The IT landscape is changing. It is not one server delivering content to a user, one user connected to one box. All of these are services. You need to understand these services, and you need to make sure from day one, when you plan for the services, performance management is part of it. I mentioned the story about this customer who had that place, who had that in play, where they were able to get everything sorted out and be able to achieve their target according to their schedule. Now, I have this, I have a very similar example with another customer who brought us in, but a bit too late because they were supposed to go live in two weeks and they were having this horrible problem that they couldn't manage and their VDI implementation was choking during certain times of the day, they had no idea what was going on. They had Citrix in, they had VMware in, everybody took a look at it, they couldn't understand what was going on. They brought us in. And we've been in a lot of these situations, and some of them uh, we've been able to, uh, uh, in most, for the most part, we will find out what is causing the issue. In some cases, that is enough for a project to go forward. But in this particular case, we found out that the antivirus uh, was 
doing an on-demand scan on a VDI environment for a certain group of users and during the bootstorm, during when people start working during the beginning of the day was causing enough of traffic because their application nacer was such that when they first launched their applications, they were reading a bunch of files in loading it into the applications and everything that they were touching was being scanned. So this created a huge problem across the entire environment and not just threatening VDI, threatening everything else there. And within a few hours, we found out that this was the problem. They were having an IO issue, but uh, IO issue was happening because of antivirus. But it was so late in the process and they had never seen this or they were not prepared for this. They were not able to resolve this with the antivirus team, with the company, uh, essentially in a, in a reasonable time frame that they were not able to go ahead with the project. We found the problem. They were able to eventually fix it. But by that time, they even missed their launch date and their budgets were cut. Long story short, they didn't have performance management in the beginning stage, in the planning stage, in their, uh, in their POC, in the pilot stage, and it cost them the success of the project. And I think today's, uh, today's service-based applications, today's uh, different nature of how people are uh, embracing this service-based uh, way, it makes more sense to have your performance management tools in the beginning of the life cycle. Make sure I'm not just saying talking about EG, I'm just talking in general. If you are thinking about, and we should, you should not be embarking on an IT project without a performance management plan in place for that particular project. And it should be a plan that starts from day one of your uh, application product life cycle. Yeah, Bob, I, to, I totally agree. I, I'd go even further. I'd say if, you, if you're if you in that meeting with that VDI guy and you start talking about performance management and he says, oh, well, I already have this tool and that tool and the other tool, you're probably talking to the wrong person. If, if, you're, if you talk to the person who is responsible for the business, if you're at a hospital and you're talking about an Epic deployment, for instance, and instead of talking to the VDI, you go, you go talk to the Epic team, they will absolutely immediately understand why performance management is critical. If you're deploying a new broker desktop and you're talking to the team responsible for broker services as opposed to the BDI guy, they will absolutely get the need for performance management. I think sometimes it, it, you absolutely can tell if you're in the right place by the response to this question. Yeah, and, and the right place for everybody to be is the performance management should be in from phase one, from stage one. And it frustrates uh, me knowing that uh, even today, uh, some people don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Right. And it also helps in the long run, too. I mean, I love this life cycle question. I don't know if that's where you're heading. But the, the truth is, most of the outages that we see, right, most of the problems we have, you were talking about that antivirus, when someone kicked that off, it's going to be because somebody did something, right? It's going to be a change management issue in one of the silos. And unless you have that cross-platform look, you're, you're in the same ridiculous conversation of calling everyone on the phone or asking them if they did anything last night. You know, it's a ridiculous way to sort of manage, you know, to manage any kind of operation, right? With this sort of calling people and asking them, if, did you do anything wrong last night, Doug? Because I'm pretty sure you did. Right. And the, the problem, uh, what Ken mentioned, uh, we see in our experience, two out of three problems happens because of a change, whether it's authorized or unauthorized. Everything that was working fine suddenly stops working because somebody made a change, whether intentionally, unintentionally, because of change management, through change management, whatever, but some changes happen. And you need the solution to tell you what changed and what the impact is so you can get on with the business of taking care of it, delivering the right customer experience rather than picking up the phone, like he said, and calling up a bunch of users, get on a conference call, and let's try to figure this out. Everybody got their own tool in front of you? Okay, this is going to be a long night, boys. Let's see. So, Bala, is your solution something that's deployed on-prem or in the cloud? Essentially, Both. this is uh, this can be deployed uh, on-premise. Uh, it can be consumed as a service through the cloud. We have uh, both available, and some of our partners also deliver this um, as managed services through their cloud. It's essentially a manager data collector concept where there is a manager where there is all the intelligence. The data collector collects the performance data from all the different systems that is being monitored, pumps it into the manager, all the correlation, everything happens here. Everything is 100% web-based. So that essentially means you could have your cloud uh, service running on Amazon. Uh, 
the EG cloud service running on Amazon, and then you could have your servers in uh, in New York, in LA, in London, and all of that could talk to the servers in Amazon, and you don't have to have a special uh, VPN for that. Everything would work through HTTP or HTTPS. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, um, very simple to use, and uh, one of the biggest uh, advantages or one of the biggest things that we focused on was the performance management solutions always had a bad rap of uh, promising a lot, but being very, very, very complicated to uh, deploy and deliver. And uh, the big three, uh, if you will, um, specialized on solutions that cost millions of dollars and uh, cost tens of millions of dollars to actually implement because that's how many people you would have to have in your organization from the companies to run it for years before it'll get anywhere close to usable. Um, what we felt was that was a big knock against uh, a proper performance management tool. So from the beginning, we built intelligence into the tool to make sure that this is a lot easier and as turnkey as possible. So when compared to a comparative solution that will give you all of this in months, this is, we are talking days in which you can quickly deliver value for you, be production ready. Perfect, perfect. Um, and here's a question for you. So infrastructure, services, UX, apps, what do we monitor and, why, and when? Good question. We need to monitor everything. Because today, if you just monitor, so this is how the industry is split today. There are people who just focus on monitoring infrastructure. There are companies who just focus on monitoring user experience. They say, hey, everything is user experience. I will tell you if the user is having a problem. You know what? 10 minutes later, my user will call up and tell me if he's having a problem. But can you also tell me why he's having a problem? Because that's more important to me so I can fix it. And you can't tell that if you're not monitoring services, if you're not monitoring applications, if you're not monitoring infrastructure. If you're just monitoring infrastructure and come back to me and say, my TCP connections are good, my network connection is good, and the user is complaining he's got a problem, you are in two different continents. It's not matching. So really, a true performance management solution should be monitoring everything. It should start from monitoring the user experience, understand the service that is being delivered to the user and the different applications that make up that service, and then the underlying infrastructure that delivers those applications and service. And all of that need to be correlated. And we have a bunch of patterns on this, essentially to correlate end-to-end -end services, understand root cause analysis in the end-to-end -end service. It is really how you need to monitor today's technology. Imagine today we are going into a service-defined data center, right? Not infrastructure-defined data center, now service-defined applications, service-defined data center, meaning dynamic applications. So if there is more load, spin off two or three more servers to handle the load. And the load goes, load goes away, take off those three servers. So when you're dynamically spinning off three servers, your monitoring solution should be able to automatically discover those, make it part of the service, understand they are now part of the mix delivering the service. And then when it finishes up and goes away, it should be able to take it away and automatically adjust accordingly. So you need to have these capabilities into the solution like EG does for you to be able to effectively manage end-to-end -end services today. And that's how you need to be managing everything. It's truly an end-to-end -end service that is being delivered to the customer. It's not a piece of infrastructure that you need to look at. It's not a piece of app or just the user experience. Got it. You got it. Anything to add there, Ken? Yeah, I think it's all about, you know, to me, I always go and ask, and ask them to take, take me through incidents. Take me through performance incidents and what you've done in your organization. So if somebody calls in and says, this is slow, this is not working, you know, you, you're at, at your instant response desk and that person's going to swivel their chair and that first tool they pick up needs to be able to be the most useful solid tool they have i, I like bala's point about end user all the different elements and, and a lot of them those other big tools really do suffer from a lot of data and not a lot of intelligence and i think eg's done a good job of tying those templates together and being that tool that, that you're going to want to look at when a customer complains you're going to want to go right to that and say okay this is going to help me figure this out right away i'm seeing everything because visibility is the key, right? If you're if you're only looking at one thing, 
you're obviously not going to see all the elements of the problem. So, yeah, I, I think it's that it's that good to me that's the monitor, the, the, the swivel monitor, right? The one I look to, okay, here, now let me see what's going on now. And it's, it's a great tool that way. Perfect. Um, okay, let's guys, let's uh, go ahead and conclude this thing. I have a couple more questions for you real quick. Uh, so uh, since we have both you guys on, you know, a, a integrator in, in the provider, uh, let's um, let's sort of flip the questions around. Uh, so uh, for Bala, uh, what kind of value does a partner like Gotham bring to EG Innovation? Do you need guys like this out there? Oh, absolutely. Gotham has been great. Um, they are a premier service provider in the tri-state area, and uh, the kind of guys they have, the kind of engineers Ken has, uh, many of them are trusted advisors to the companies that they service to. And that's what you really need. Uh, that means they are uh, they're able to bring a tremendous amount of experience and best practice uh, in the industry uh, as a company. But more importantly, their guys uh, are extremely good in understanding the client's current situation, working with them to improve the process technologies. Essentially, they think about making it a better world for the customer. They want to do the right thing for their customers. And in that way, they have the same philosophy as us. And that's why they are a great partner for us. Perfect. Ken, thank you so much for, for coming on the show and taking the time to be with us today. I, I really enjoyed it. I have one more question for you. And that is, is there more to, you know, uh, we've done it. We've used EG and everything's working great. Performance is great. Uh, is there more to it than that, uh, uh, than finding the right products, the right solution, you know, whatever? Uh, um, how do you guys, you know, what added value do you provide from there? You know, honestly, I really like, I, I love Bala's comment about the philosophy of it. I think that that is a good place where we, I think we look at the same problems. I mean, they've been fixing this problem for a number of years now. They're committed to making stable, deployable, expandable uh, configurations for application deployment. And we can feel comfortable going to a customer and talking, you know, pointing towards this solution. I think, you know, one of the challenges of these kind of operational issues is that they're hard to deploy and they're sticky once they're in and you can't swap them out every two to three years you know when this person gets acquired this person does that or this person does the other thing um so I'm, we're very comfortable with dg and they've been a great customer with a great vendor rather with a consistent philosophy and a consistent mission and that's you know what my customers need you got it guys thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today um i'll just go ahead and throw it at you guys to uh, to give me the last words. So, Bala? Um, I want to thank you, uh, Doug, for putting this together. And uh, thanks, Ken, for uh, joining us. And I think this has been a, a great conversation. I definitely enjoy this. Uh, it uh, allowed me to vent a little bit, <laughs> but I think it was uh, a great conversation. And uh, we should do this again soon. Ken? Awesome. Well, thanks, Doug. And uh, thanks, Bala, too. Yeah, I also had a great time. And I think. You know, hopefully, that this will help some people kind of get started earlier with a, with a place that we all end up in to be successful. That's, that's my goal. Okay, so that concludes another successful episode of DABCC Radio. As always, I want to thank my guests for today, Ken and Bala. Uh, Bala, thank you so much for taking the time to help set this up for one. Uh, EG uh, is a partner of mine. I've worked with these guys for a long time because they make a great solution. And, and our customers, my customers, uh, my listeners are very happy with it and uh, somebody I'm really happy to, to partner with and work with for, for the period of time that I have, which is a long period of time. And uh, so just definitely check out what these guys are doing. It's, it's um, well, it solves the problem. You know, sometimes you can use, you can piece together solutions. Oh, maybe this one's okay, or I'll use these combinations, or like they said, I'll look at some counters. Uh, or then, you know, it comes to the time when you say, you know what, I just want to solve this problem, and I want to be done with it. And uh, performance and, and user experience is something you should not try to piece together. It's something you should solve. And you should, as they mentioned today, you should solve it up front. This is a planning issue. This is a go-to-market issue. And, um, yeah, what else do I say? Definitely check out what EG is doing. Uh, Gotham, uh, um, I loved having those guys on, uh, Ken on. Uh, they're one of the best in the world. And um, when got somebody that's one of the best in the world you look at what they're doing because they didn't get there by using subpar technology so on that note thank you again ken for sharing your insights uh, bala for sharing your insights and uh and each and every one of you guys for listening to dabcc radio definitely check out 
www.dabcc.com. We have a brand new, I'm really excited. The site is being updated after so long. New look and feel from the ground up rewrite. And so if you head over to the site, if it's not, if it's still the old look and feel, well, visit tomorrow, visit the next day. It's going to happen within the next couple of weeks. I don't know when you're listening to this, so I can't tell you exactly when, but uh, it's going to happen within the next couple of weeks and you guys are going to love it. It's just extremely simple, beautiful, powerful, and really easy to find the information you want when you need it and how. Uh, head over to videos.dabcc. It's a really new, beautiful look for a video site that is an easy way for you guys to come into uh, uh, wake up in the morning or at lunchtime or whenever you feel a little bit bored and want to learn something. Head over to videos.dabcc.com and see what, uh, you know, find anything you want, but also see what's latest that day. Uh, which is really powerful. You can actually sign up for a daily digest that'll send you an email every single day or every Monday through uh, Friday and uh, uh, with the latest videos of that day. That's the only thing in the email, just the list of the videos. And you can say, oh, I want to watch this one. Cool. You know, I use it daily and I watch about two or three videos, about 15 minutes, uh, maybe sometimes longer. Maybe there's a webinar in there that's an hour. And, uh, but within, you know, just a handful of minutes, I'm able to stay up to date with all the technology. We, we have everybody in there. So definitely check that out. So again, videos.dabcc, www.dabcc, eginnovations.com. And, uh, what else do I say? But thanks to each and every one of you guys uh, for listening to DABC. D-A-B-C-C? D-A-B-C. Say it again. D-A-B-C-C. D-A-B-C. Can you say it again? D-A-B-C-C. D-A-B-C. How about D-A-B-C-C? D-A-B-C. D-A-B-C-C. 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 D-A-B-C-C.